we stop? Who's got one of these? Mobile phone in the room. Yes? Right. Grab your mobile phone, whack it on record, and record the next 20 minutes. Because I promise you won't want to miss what I'm about to say. You won't want to forget it either. It's a nice cheating way of me getting you to remember what I'm going to say. Right, sidestepping. Do 20 to without planning permission. That's not possible, is it? Surely not, but oh yeah, it is. What are we going to do? I'm going to go through very, very quick, who are we? Uh, I'm going to tell you what sidestepping is all about. Because that sounds like a dance rather than a planning strategy, but no, it works. A couple of case studies, some figures, because I know you guys are property investors and you love figures. And then we'll have plenty of time for questions. The reason I'm getting you to record it is like Rory, I speak at warp speed. So it's a case of you being able to catch it all. If you miss anything of what I'm going to say, the uh, slides will be on our website after tonight. Right, for the TPS, we are one of the South's most forward thinking planning consultancies, one of the UK's most successful. 95% of our applications go through. Um, we are your local experts for everything planning, and we're trusted by PPM founders, major developers, and smaller investors alike. We're a nice consultancy. For those who have heard me speak before, you'll know what that means. Not in it to con everyone. Um, our job is to work for you. We're also smart planning a smarter planning practice, and we're property investors. We've got two HMOs, one of which I got planning permission for, one in Portsmouth and one in Gospels. We're doing it. Right, sidestepping. What sidestepping is, is an understanding of your permitted development rights and how they can be applied. This is not how they were ever intended to be applied, but this is the word of the law rather than the nice interpretation of the law. So, it is setting a formal plan permission to one side and creating opportunity using the rights that you have right now. We're not talking about dry notification. We're talking about stuff that happens outside of the planning system. So where are the opportunities? It allows the creation of dwellings without a planning permission, without prior notification without writing to the council and saying, dear Mr. Planning Officer, you're oh so nice. I would so love to have dwellings and him saying no. That's all removed. It allows the release of difficult sites. Who amongst us has found a really tasty looking pub that's empty, vacant, been dead for years, run the council and said, I'd love to develop that. And the council's turned around and said, no, we like pubs, even though they've been vacant for 16 years, because pubs are a community <coughs> asset and we want to keep them. That, this allows you to release that site. And even more importantly, you get this planning system, this horrible behemoth that we have, to work for you. So, an example. Retail to Resi, and this is a no application route. Class G of part three, option two of the general permit development order 2015 allows you to do two flats above a shop. We all know this, don't we? Yes, of course we do. We're hardened property investors, we know these things. There are no size limits. There are no location limits. You can do it in a <coughs> conservation area, an area of outstanding natural beauty. You can do it within the green belt that surrounds Bournemouth and Nepal. And there are no time limits. There's no three year implementation. You can do it when you want. Section 55.1 of the Town and Country Planning Act says planning permission is not required where there's no material change of use. That sounds all right. So you don't need planning permission on one side, you don't need planning permission on the other. So how does it work? Now these are real. These are case studies that we've worked up and are active live cases and I've had permission from both applicants to do them. So this is 1 to 3 London Road in Morden. Morden is in the borough of Merton, South London. We have a large round floor shop with two floors above. And it's blighted. It's in an area which is to be redeveloped. 
basically Morden Town Centre has a policy on it that says we will flatten the town centre in 15 years and develops another blue water, basically. So the council will not allow anything to happen to this building. It's completely blighted, completely knackered as far as the planning situation is concerned. However, you get up to two flats above a shop. Okay, we've got a shop. We get two flats out of it. That's okay, not great. But with section 55, we can chop the ground floor shop into three. It's big enough. We can just do a nice three split all the way through, and we can rent those three shops. Don't need planning permission for that. Now, how many shops have we got? We've got three. How many flats can we get? Six. Interested? Why are people recording? <laughs> Neon Solon. Neon Solon, tiny little town, part of the conurbation of Gosport, really high prices for the area. We have a large ground floor portrait with two floors above. It's in a conservation area. I can't use prior notification in a conservation area, you're not allowed to. And the other floors are too small to convert to flats. This is where you use the system to get you where you want to be. A sneaky planning commission gets put in. Change the use of the laundry into two small shops. It's in a town centre. The council policy says we want shops. We want shops like they're going out of fashion. So you're going to get that planning commission. Oops, right. As soon as that's granted, you instantly get this class new words. And then you have four flats. Two above each shop. We've just created the two shops. No size limits, no location limits, no time limits. All the bits about this evaporate. Some numbers. This is Lee's Lane. No, this is Leon Solent, sorry. And I've got permission from my client to show you this. So these are real. They're not made up. He's buying for that. That's how much overall his sneaky little planning permission is going to cost him. That's too bad. That's how much the renovation cost is. That's the GDB for four one beds once he's got his sneaky planning permission. That's the <coughs> other part of the GDB. You know, he gets two shops. He can't rent it all direct. We can certainly rent two shops in that area. No problem at all. No sill or section 106. They disappear. And that's the profit out. He invests that, he gets <coughs> that. Worth it? Right. Um, conclusions. I've done that really quick. I told you I speak at warp speed. It's legal. I can't say that strongly enough. It is allowed by both the Planning Act and the Development Order. The orders are written badly. Abuse it, use it because this is not how they were ever intended. But it won't take long for the government to have lots and lots and lots of whinges um, and for them to change this. There's no prior notification required using this method. How many people are abused attempting a prior notification application? What do you say? How, hands up, who's attempting a prior note application? Yeah? They're supposed to be easy. Trust me, councils make them hard. I dealt with one in Woking recently where the council was using every trick in the book to get me to withdraw, me as a planning consultant, to get me to withdraw because they were trying to do it to the But there's this massive opportunity for the enhancement of your development sites. I've been John McDermott, I'm a town planning expert. Any questions? Can you just clarify the definition of, you know, if you've got one shop, you split it into two, just for clarity, they have to be at the front, i.e. you put access to those shops on the high street. They, they can't be front to back, yeah? They have to be traditional shops. So the property has to be wide enough to take the shop fronts you want to take. So if you were, let's pick an example like an old Woolies. Woolies shop fronts were huge. 
they were normally four bay shop fronts, bay, each bay being a, 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 a shop front stall riser. So you'd have shop front window, line, shop front window, line. In that kind of circumstance, most of those eventually either went to Newark or Poundland or got packed up into three or four smaller units because that's all they could do with them. But the moment they got chopped up, they got these rights. So in answer to your question, yes, they have to be traditional shops. So they have to have a public facing front elevation. Anyone else? Or have I stunned you all into silence? <laughs> Goodness, what have I done? <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's no size requirement because there's no planning permission Absolutely not. And there's been quite a couple of quite famous cases, again up in London, and everything happens in London, um, where the inspectorate ruled that just because the shop was only three metres wide and only six metres deep, it was still a shop for planning purposes, and therefore you can have the four flats above. Anyone else? Steve? You mentioned at the beginning pubs. It's going to be used for pubs. In what way would it be? So I'm dealing with, I'll give the real world example because okay. it's probably a bit easier. I'm dealing with a scheme up in Aldershot at the moment. Now Aldershot has a policy, as does everyone. We love pubs, 